All right. Welcome, everybody. And thank you so much for those that are watching now and those that are watching the future. Thank you so much for being here. So we have a super exciting story time today for month two. Um, today, we have me, Mr. Josh, uh, and then we also have a very special guest. We have Trevor Norman. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Thanks for being on, Trevor. And then hey, we also have our wonderful ASL interpreter, Diane. She's with us as well today. So we're super excited to have everybody on today. So before we get into any sort of programming, we got to talk about what kind of programming we're doing today and why we're doing it. So this month's story time is all about photography. And you're probably wondering, well, how, why is that important? Well, let me tell you why it's so important. And it's because it gets to preserve our history. So really what that means is when we take pictures at like special occasions, like birthday parties and graduations, those are absolutely great. And they do capture that memory. But a lot of the times the pictures that we take just in our normal day-to-day -day life, those become some of our most important pictures that we have. So that allows us to preserve our history, allows us to showcase what's going on in the community at any given time. Uh, it just allows us to be better community members. Um, so CS loved pictures. And we'll get to take a look at some of the pictures that he actually was part of uh, today. And then we're actually gonna get to take a look at some of the pictures that Trevor, our guest today, um, has taken around the community as well. Um, so just remember, next time that your, uh, your family members or whoever wants to take a picture, uh, you, you agree because it, you know, it helps preserve a little bit of that, that history that's going on. Um, so maybe, maybe don't give them such a hard time. Um, so just a really quick what's on our agenda today. Um, we are going to read Take a Picture of Me, Mr. or James Vanderzee by Adria J. Loney. Uh, Trevor will read that, so that'll be coming up. Uh, we're going to share a couple of our favorite photos from the collection here at Applewood, and then Trevor's also going to share a couple of his favorite photos that he's taken. Um, so we're super excited about that. And then we will also get to take a look at kind of what it takes to take pictures, um, some general rules of thumb uh, when taking pictures and what it kind of looks like to take a good picture. And then if we have enough time, we'll explore um, some of the accessories and maybe the look at the camera that uh, Trevor takes his pictures with. So yeah, without further ado, I think we should start to introduce the book. So like I said, we're gonna read, take a picture of me, James Vander Zee. Uh, it is a story about a groundbreaking artist, um, a photographer who actually took pictures throughout a very important era in Harlem. So Harlem is a city in New York, um, and it showcases the beauty and the pride of its people. Uh, so this is something that Trevor, uh, which is why we have him on, loves to be able to continue to do. Um, and we at Apple would love to be able to take the pictures that were taken in the past, and even the ones we currently take. Um, and really build on the story that, that they have. Um, so yeah, we'll see some pictures today about how images are captured and take a look through the lens, uh, so to say. So we're super excited. And Trevor, would you like to take on over with the, the book? Yeah, um, yeah, I can hop right on into it. So uh, yeah, once again, guys, my name is Trevor Norman. I'm a photographer here in the city. Uh, I've been shooting for about five or six years now. And today I'm gonna be reading to you the book Take a picture of me, James Vanderzee, by Andrea Loney, illustrated by Keith Mallet. Let's get started. Deep in the heart of Lenox, Massachusetts, in a white frame house nestled between his aunt's home and his grandparents' house, lived a boy named James Vanderzee. That's him under the tree. There's the houses. James was the oldest boy of three sons and two daughters. At the Vanderzees, the children learned about music and art and kindness too. James played the violin and piano. He also liked to paint, but drawing people was hard. He could never get their expressions right. James wanted to share the beauty he saw in his heart. And you can see him right there singing along, playing the piano, and there's some drawn people. One day, a man came to the Vanderzee home with a huge contraption called a camera. It was the only camera in Linux. Click, boom. The man took the family's picture and left. Later, he returned with a photograph that perfectly captured everyone's smiles and their mother's sweet gaze. 
Now this is how you make great pictures, thought James. I want a camera. And you can see there's the guy, there's the contraption right there, the camera that he had, and there's the family. In a magazine, James found a contest where the first prize was a camera. To win, he had to sell the most sachets of ladies' perfume. After months of selling sachets, James won. He won! But the camera came in parts, and the parts didn't fit together. So James had to start over again. He weeded his neighbor's garden for a quarter a day until he saved $5. And then James was the second person in Linux to own a camera. So that's him right there. He was selling the sachets to a lady, the perfume. And then that's him after he got his camera. First, James took pictures of his family, then his classmates. Soon people from all over town were saying, take a picture of me, James Van Der Zee. At home, James turned his closet into a dark room and learned how to develop film. It wasn't easy to create photographs, but James loved his family. He loved his town and the people in it. So he always worked to make them look their best. And right here you can see there's James taking pictures of his classmates. And then over here, that's him in his dark room making the photos. Isn't that cool? Far away from Linux, the world was changing. Many Black families were leaving the segregated South to start new lives in big Northern towns like New York City. James was ready for an adventure. At the age of 18, he took his camera and moved to Harlem. Whew! Compared to Linux, Harlem was big and fast and exciting. James had to hold on to his hat to keep his head from spinning. And there you can see, look at, look at that. It's a lot of building, looks like, look, he's holding on to his hat. <laughs> All right. After working as a pianist, a waiter, and an elevator operator, James finally got a job as an assistant photographer at a portrait studio in New Jersey. Many big city customers came to have their portraits taken. James couldn't wait to take their photographs, but his boss sent him straight to the dark room. He said customers would not want their portraits taken by a black man. Do you guys think that's fair? There we go. All right. James did not like the way his boss took portraits. His boss shot the photographs too quickly. Sometimes the customers weren't even ready. In the dark room, James worked hard to make everyone look their best. One day, his boss left for vacation and put James in charge of the shop. James promised to take care of the business, but in his own way. So there's his boss taking the photos. Look, they look a little startled, don't they? They weren't even ready. And there's his boss leaving. And there's James. He's going to he's gonna take care of it. <laughs> Instead of rushing the customers, James talked to them. He found their natural smiles and the perfect backgrounds. James treated the customers like family. In the dark room, James made their picture look even better. He brightened people's eyes, straightened their teeth, and fixed their hair. He saw what was special in everyone and captured each person's story on film. So there you can see, they don't look as startled as the other ones, right? There we go. He's doing a good job taking those pictures. When James' boss returned, he found a line of customers saying, take a picture of me, James Vanderzee. So James went back to New York and opened his very own portrait studio in Harlem, where the neighborhood was jumping with brand new music, art, books, and glamor. This cultural celebration was called the Harlem Renaissance. Just about everyone, politicians like Marcus Garvey, athletes like Joe Lewis and the New York Black Yankees, and world famous performers like Florence Mills, Bill Bojangles Robinson, and Mamie Smith wanted fancy portraits taken by James Van Der Zee. And you can see that's when he went back home. And those are all the famous people who James took photos of. 
James photographed the rich and the poor, but mostly the middle class. And this distinguished him from many other photographers. At the time, photographs of black people were often sad and grim depictions of poor farm workers or struggling city dwellers. But when James stepped behind the camera, click, boom, everything changed. James used beautiful backdrops, fancy props, and elegant clothing to help the people of his neighborhood look their best. In the dark room, he fixed the photos and combined images to create a perfect portrait. Wouldn't you guys want a photographer to help you look your best? That's what James did. Even James street photography captured the pride, beauty, and joy of Harlem. People all over the world proudly displayed James's photos in their homes, in their business, and close to their hearts. But the world was changing again. Cameras were now smaller and cheaper. People could take their own photographs. Soon, customers stopped going to James Van Der Zee's studio. So there's the photo right there. It looks like he took some photos on someone's wedding day and now it's in their locket. And then here's them. Everyone's getting their own camera. See, he has his own camera and James is like, man, I could have took those photos. James tried to keep working. He took passport photos, shooting tiny portraits that helped send folks on faraway adventures. Eventually though, James had no choice but to put away his camera. Instead, he fixed up old photographs sent to him by people from all over the world. Several years later, a visitor arrived at James' studio. The Metropolitan Museum of Art needed photographs for an exhibit on the history of Harlem. They found thousands of photos showing thousands of Harlem residents, all taken by James Van Der Zee. So that's a picture of him right there. He's fixing up some of the old photos. And then right there, he's showing the guy all his photos that he took for the museum exhibit. The exhibit was called Harlem on my mind and James' work was a huge hit. People said it was like walking through 40 years of the history of Harlem. And if you look right there, everyone is there and they're all looking at James's photos. The photographs showed the Harlem of families and churches, friends and clubs, neighbors and celebrities, the Harlem of love, pride and community, the Harlem that James Van Der Zee always saw in his heart. And people came to say, take a picture of me, James Van Der Zee. So James stepped behind the camera once again, click, click. And there's just a few more photos. And there's James. All right, guys, that was it for the book. Hopefully you all liked it. Thank you so much, Trevor. That was amazing. Thank Absolutely thank amazing. That book was super awesome, right? Yeah, I loved it. I loved it so much. So in the book, it's super interesting because it talks about how there was one man with a camera who took tons of pictures of a lot of things. And then it kind of talked about the transition of how it went from one person with a camera to a bunch of people with cameras. Yeah. And even though that meant James didn't necessarily have the same job that he had before, he kind of realized that it was the turning of a time in which there could be a lot more community documented. And I think that's kind of what you follow, right, Trevor? Like you're not the yeah. only person in Flint with a camera, but you're one of a bunch of people that can document some really, really good information yeah. in Flint. Absolutely. And I think one of the coolest things about not being the only photographer in Flint is that I can't be in 10 places at once, you know? So not I can be taking photos of an event going on here, then other photographers can be taking photos at other events or other families, capturing all the memories that we have, not just the select few that I see, you know? Yeah, absolutely. No, that's a really, really good point. And in the book, it just showcases how important photography is and how it can be life changing, really. Um, you know, James Zanderzy went from a person that was not quite sure what he was going to do to being one of the most regarded uh, photographers in, in history. 
I mean, he yeah. has his own like place in the, the Metropolitan Museum in New York City. So, I mean, that's, that's a pretty cool thing. So yeah. Trevor, what would you say if I said we have our own pictures that are also pretty cool and then that, I think you sent me over some pictures that are also pretty cool. Should we take a look at those? I did, yeah, let's take a look at those. All right, let me bring up the PowerPoint so that we can see everything that's going on here. All right. PowerPoint started. All right, so I call this history through the lens. Mm, because, I like that. <laughs> because at this point, um, as we've talked about, pictures are amazing. And really one of the coolest parts about pictures are the pictures themselves, but also the stories that go alongside the pictures. So a lot of times when we see a picture, like I was mentioning when we were at the very beginning of story time today, um, they can be really cool. They can be a birthday photo. They could be a graduation photo. And that's great. But they also could be a photo of you standing on a street somewhere. And if a person was to just look at that picture, they would be like, well, what does that really mean? And this picture that I'm about to show you here is a perfect example of that. So if you were to look at this picture, you would say, oh, okay, well, it's an elderly man. He looks like he's sitting maybe on a trash can or a bucket or something along those lines. But why, why is that important? So the really cool story behind this picture is because this is actually C.S. Mott. And he was 97 years old in this picture. And according to our diaries, he never missed the opportunity to vote. Not one time did he miss the opportunity. And what's really interesting and a little sad is just shortly after this picture was taken, he would actually pass away. So he, up until his very end, really cared about participating in the community and making it a better place. And this picture showcases that. So it takes it from a picture of just an elderly man sitting on a trash can at a booth to showcasing the enduring legacy of CS and the Mots as a whole in their participation in the community. So as the saying is, images are used to capture historic moments. So like we've said, this moment is pretty amazing. And then we always know the old adage, a picture is worth a thousand words. So like the last picture, we kind of mentioned, well, what is this picture? It just seems like another elderly man is talking to a boy. But the really cool part about this is the story. And that's the reoccurring theme here. It's like the stories behind pictures are super, super cool. And it allows us to keep that time exactly the way it was. Um, so when you write down history, it can always change when it's given to different people and they can reinterpret it. But a picture, it doesn't change much. Um, so in this picture right here, we have CS is talking to a boy. Um, and the interesting part about this picture is that boy is actually, uh, his dad works at GM. And CS is talking to him at a shop class um, at Longfellow Junior High School. Um, so it's really cool because it shows CS's care about not only the current generation of people in the community, uh, like this boy's dad, but also the future generation of the community. Um, and that's something we try to practice at Applewood is we really want to make sure that when we're in the community, we're focusing on not just the current generation, but the future generation that's going to come up and, and make the community an even better place. Because that's what we really try to do, right? Is we just try to make the, pla the place that we're at a little bit better when we leave it, you know? Um, so at this point, those are some of the, my, one of my favorite couple pictures that we have from our collection. Um, I think now Trevor has some awesome photo photos that he would like to talk about. Yeah. So this is just um, really quickly. Sorry, Trevor. This is just a oh, little quote. Um, just kind of showing the history of the people and the communities that we live in is why we uh, still take pictures and things like that. All right. So this is the photo I started with. This, this seems like a good introduction to who Trevor is. Who is Trevor? Yeah. So um, Trevor is a photographer who lives in Flint, Michigan, that just loves to live life and experience new things. Um, you know, I actually took this, um, I think, earlier this year. You know, I was going through all of my photos on my computer one day and I said, you know, I don't have any photos of myself. So um, I set my camera up on my tripod, set up a light, and I really just wanted to capture some pictures of me 
to remember me happy. I was genuinely happy in these moments. You see, I got on my cool shoes. I got on my Dragon Ball Z shirt. Um, just a couple of things to make me happy and just being in that space and time. Um, I was just really happy and I wanted to capture that so I could always remember that. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes a really, really good point too, is it's, you know, outside of just capturing the community as a whole, but like capturing your own, like little community, even if it's family or self, um, just being able to capture that exact moment and like yeah. really encapsulate what you're feeling at that time is, is super cool. All yeah. right. This is one of my favorite pictures. You sent me a bunch of pictures to look at, but this was <laughs> one of my favorites. And I, I saved the best for my very, very favorite for last, but this one is a really close second. Okay. All right. So um, this photo, what I really like about this photo is um, I can't remember the artist's name, but um, I don't know if anyone here has heard of the um, Flint Art Project, uh, Flint Public Art Project. That's run by Joe, and Joe has been getting so many artists from all over the world to come to Flint and put up different murals to just make our city look a little bit better. Um, this one, I didn't get the whole photo, but she put up um, two young kids holding sunflowers and I thought it was the most beautiful thing in the world but I really just wanted to capture her working and also looking at her work um, I definitely think it's important you know if you love something you should have pictures of you doing it so um, I did send her the photos that I took of her um, putting those putting that mural up and she just absolutely loved them so not only were they important to me they were also important to her that's amazing. So where is this mural at, Trevor? If anybody wanted to go oh, see it, can yeah, they go see it? Definitely. Um, if anyone wants to go see this mural, oh, I can't remember if this is <laughs> the one. I put in, you on the spot. I'm sorry, Trevor. No, no, no. You're good. Uh, Brush Alley. I'm pretty sure that's the one in Brush Alley. So if you go downtown Flint, um, you know, we have several different alleys. That one should be in Brush Alley by the skate shop, if I'm not, if I'm not um, confused. <laughs> No, that's awesome. I mean, just saying that, you know, there's a bunch of them around Flint. So like, go check them out. Like, that, and that just yeah. kind of encourages people to get out and explore too. Like Absolutely. you were mentioning you as a person, like you love getting out and exploring things and trying new things. Mm -hmm. um, you can t see a photo and get the story behind that photo. And it could absolutely make you want to go visit that place. I mean, how many times have we seen like travel photos or photos in books that were like, okay, we kind of need to go see that because it's too cool not to go see right <laughs> all right so this is my this was my favorite i lo again i loved all of them they were all special in their own what? way but this one was my favorite and i just <laughs> i want to know what the story behind this picture was because yeah. she seemed so happy she was so excited so um that was her birthday actually and i can't remember i'm pretty sure it was her 80th or close to it and her whole entire family was there. People flew in, they rented out um, a, a conference room in a hotel and just threw this big party for her. So when she came in, that was the reaction on her face. And, you know, it's just really cool to capture people's genuine happiness like I did with myself in the first photo. But for her to just walk around that corner and see that everyone was there for her celebrating her, this is something that she'll always remember. But not only that, after you know some things happen um her family will remember this photo and this time as well it takes them back to that space of being happy and celebratory and you know all those good feelings <laughs> yeah no absolutely I, I think that's an interesting point is you know i didn't really know the story behind many of these pictures because i was just gonna be excited as to when you told me live because i just wanted to you know be surprised with the guest uh, but even looking at this picture with no context, no story, like we're, we really emphasize story is super important. But even without a story, you can tell that this lady was super happy and super excited to, to be in the situation. And then on top of that, adding the story just makes it even better. Um, yeah. And like you said, like, you know, not everybody gets to last forever. Nobody gets to last forever for that matter. Right. And it's really, really nice and important to have things that you can pass down generationally um, you know, that documents what was going on at the time and things like that. And I think we've both mentioned it where like, that's something that's a goal of yours when you take photos. And that's a goal of ours at Applewood is to make sure that we're passing on something uh, that allows us to make the community better and, and generally just a stronger place. Absolutely. 
So, all right. At that point, I am going to ask you some questions, Trevor. Are you ready for okay. those questions? Yeah, go right ahead. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing and it's just going to be us. So okay. my first question is, what made you get into photography? Um, what made me get into photography? So I guess I've kind of always been around photography. My grandfather, he had a couple old Polaroids. And back then, well, I guess film was still expensive back then that is, as it is now. But I would always take photos on his Polaroid and they would just print right out just then and there. So that was when I was young. Then I didn't touch a camera for I don't know how long. Then about seven years ago, um, my dad, my dad is like the family photographer. Anytime we have an event, he brings his camera. Um, one day, one of my cousins was, were, they were on their way to prom and my dad didn't want to go take the photo. So he told me to do it. So I went and he had this a camera that's similar to mine now. And I went and I took the photo. And honestly, it was the sound of the shutter, the sound of the camera going off. I was like, wow, that's that's exhilarating. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just kept taking photo after photo. And then before I knew it, um, I bought it, my first camera, uh, taking more photos, taking more photos, um, had good friends of mine um, let me practice on them. Um, shooting my first wedding was pretty awesome. It was uh, nerve wracking, but awesome. Um, Malcolm was actually there uh, with me. Um, it was it was pretty cool. But yeah, all in all, um, yeah, I guess just capturing those moments, all of those moments is what got me into photography. That's super interesting. You mentioned the noise was like the what kind of made it like, you know, click. We'll use the yeah. we'll use a pun here. It made it click. But it kind of <laughs> talked about that in the book as well. Is like yeah. when he got his picture taken for the first time, he heard the the click boom. And at that point mm -hmm. they were using, you know, powder and things like that. So there was yeah. a little more of a noise, but it was the, it was the noise that just like it clicked in his head that he wanted. All right. This is something I want to do. All right. Well, since you have your camera out, would you like to show it off just a little bit? Yeah, I don't mind. So, um, this is, this is what I mainly shoot with these days. It's a Canon 5D Mark II. As you can see, it's pretty big. Um, so on, on, on days where I'm shooting long events, it does get a little heavy to hold. If you look at the back here, there's a lot of buttons. So this screen right here, after you take the photo, it pops up. Um, all of these do different things. Um, I'm, I, I'm not gonna explain all of them because you know um, it's a lot, but yeah. And then this is the lens. So this is a pretty big lens. This is a 35 millimeter lens. So what that means is it's a wide lens. So if I were shooting a family of like 10 people, I would use this lens. Um, it's super awesome. Sometimes you can use it to distort the photo. So you can use it to be creative, you know, not just use it for straight on and things like that. But um, yeah, this is, my, this is my baby. This is my workhorse. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, we're running up on the time here. So just the last, and it's a part, it's a two-parter. So okay. if you were a young, you say you're watching this right now, mm -hmm. what would be some things that you would give advice wise to the kids if they wanted to go out and take pictures? And then what are some general rules that you follow before you take anybody's picture? Um, Cause you can't just go around taking anybody's picture all willy nilly. There are some things that you have to do beforehand. Right. So just explain right. that. And then we'll kind of wrap it up for the day. Okay, so going back to the first question, um, you said what are some things I would I would like basically tell myself, my a younger self. Yeah, yeah. Some or even some advice to the kids is like you know maybe just picking up something small like camera wise or you know what, what oh, would you recommend yeah, to get people yeah. started? Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of the biggest hurdles, um, me myself, I struggled with when I first started is I picked up a camera and it seemed like everybody else picked up a camera at the same time. So <laughs> kind of like, you know, in, in James's book. So there was a point where it was a little disheartening and I felt like everyone was doing it. So what was the point of me doing it? But I remembered why I started doing it. I loved capturing the memories. I loved the sound of the shutter. All of those things are the things that made me keep going with it. So no matter what you do, whether it's photography or sports or education, don't quit. If everyone else is doing it, you may be able to do it different and may be able to do it better. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You could be absolutely unique in the in your craft and, and be special. 
Um, and I think phones now are really cool because you can like everybody has a phone basically at this yeah. point and everybody's phone has a camera. So yeah. like, don't be afraid to take some like grainy, blurry photos, like when you first start out, like, mm -hmm. and then you can learn as to why they're great, grainy and blurry. And Absolutely. Kind of do that. But uh, just going back to my second point, just so we can capstone this out really quickly. Um, if I was to go take a picture of somebody, what should I do? Should I ask them permission first or how does that work? Gotcha. So, um, hmm. I don't really go up to a lot of random people and ask to take their photo or even just take photos of random people. Um, but sometimes if I'm at an event or something where, you know, I am shooting random people, I just say, hey, guys, I'm the photographer here. Would you mind if I take your photo? Um, if people are in the moment, I don't even bother them. Um, a lot of times people see me and they know that I'm there to do something. Um, but as far as just being in the streets, um, you could always, it's always polite. You can, it, it's never wrong to be polite. So you can go up to someone and say, hey, you know, I really love what you're wearing. Do you mind if I take a photo of you? Or I really love how your hair kind of complements um, something else. Can I take that photo? Or I'm just a beginning photographer. Can I take a photo of you? You know, anything like that. Or um, I know some people, they don't mind if they see a photographer downtown or something like that, if they're just snapping photos, a lot of people, some people won't mind. But right. like I say, it can't go wrong being polite. <laughs> Absolutely. So ask yeah. for permission is, it yeah. seems to be the case. And then if you do take a picture, like you were saying, where they weren't necessarily paying attention um, before you do anything with that picture, you definitely want to make sure that you ask them like, Hey, can I use your picture? Anything like that? Does that sound about right? Yeah. Yeah. So if I take a picture, you know, I definitely want to, you know, ask people like, hey, you know, is it okay if I do this for that or something like that, you know, just so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think your your statement of it's always better to be polite is probably the yeah. best way to to really sum up what we're we're trying to do with with picture taking and rules in general. But yeah. well, shoot, we are just a little bit over time. And I just wanted to thank everybody that's watching and everybody that's gonna watch on Facebook. Um, I want to thank Diane for being our ASL interpreter. She was amazing. And Trevor, thank you so much for being on. Uh, hey, we used pleasure. to work together in the past, and it's super nice to get to work back with you again. Yeah. Um, and then we have behind the scenes, we have Kristen as well doing all of our uh, tech stuff. So I can just sit here and present to you guys and give you some information <laughs> and things like that. So thank you so much. Um, and thanks thank everybody for, for showing up. Trevor, would you like to, to end, uh, end the stream today? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for everyone for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the book. Definitely check it out. Check out James Vanderzee, uh, Google his name and look at all the amazing things he's done, as well as other photographers throughout history. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you next month. Thanks, Trevor. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Bye -bye.